can never grow, grow tired of singing that particular refrain. Nails, spears will pierce him through, bringing together the entirety of Jesus' message, his birth, his death, and remembering his resurrection. Well, welcome one and all. I'm so glad that you can be here with us tonight. I know that many of you called the Springs Church home. We're just thrilled that you're able to to be here. I know some of us, because of the cold, are, are worshiping with us online. Wherever you are, glad you're here. Others of you tonight are guests, and you've arrived, you've made it. Thankful for safe travels for you. Just hope that you feel welcomed here with us tonight, and that you're blessed in these times with family and friends. My name is Zach. It's my honor to serve here at the Springs as lead pastor. Merry Christmas to, to all of you. I do love Christmas. Um, I love just about everything that goes along with it. And amidst celebrating all the different parts of this great time of year, I'm also aware, even particularly this year, that we're celebrating in a real world, aren't we? It's not all the, the, the joy and the fun of, of what Christmas brings to our minds. There's a lot of reality out there. I think about places, hot spots in the world like Ukraine, certainly other places that remind us of, again, a very real world facing very real problems here at home. We have any number of things that we could list this year, from inflation to the economy, the way that that plays out, to the price of gas, the price of eggs, you name it. Those of you who are bakers at this time of year will say, man, there was stuff I had to like cut off the list. Goodness, goodness sake. And then in our personal lives, I think if we just took a couple of minutes and you know, we're able to ask a question of each and every one of us, any burdens that you're facing, things that are very real, maybe tender, as you walk into this service, there's a lot of them. Losses that you've experienced over this last year, just things that are worrisome to you, questions that you don't have the answers for heading into 2023. It's certain we live in a, in a very real world, and in this real world, I'm convinced of this. As people face these things that make them feel unsettled, even as they feel that, they're also looking for that which will answer that unsettledness. They're looking for some kind of foundation. They're looking for some kind of a handhold, hope, foundation. Good news for us tonight that I'm excited to share is that the hope and the place and the security that we're looking for is a whole lot closer than we know. In fact, it might be staring us right in the face right now, and we're talking about Christmas. The story, the message of Christmas, the words we've just sang, what Lawson talked with, our kids, and truths that they can even grasp. It's the hope that we're looking for, and it is right here. Again, we're not talking about the hallmarky side of things and the warmed over sentiments like, you know, the best way to spread Christmas cheer is to sing loudly for all to hear, right? I mean, those are, those are great. But it's not going to go the distance. So we're not talking about that side of the Christmas message. We're talking about the real and the raw and the, the power that brings hope to this world, this unstable, sometimes upside down feeling world now to remind us tonight of this true vision and hope for christmas i want to turn our attention just for a couple minutes to two scriptures that we find in the book of romans romans specifically chapter 8 verses 38 39 and then also verses 31 and 32 during advent springs our church here has been looking at romans chapter 8 we've been walking slowly through it and we've been seeing all kinds of christmas connections I believe we're going to see these once again in these verses that we look at tonight. I want to read first Romans 8, 38, and 39, which says this, For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Right here, friends. We are told of the anchor and the stability that you need and that I need in our lives. In these verses, Paul writes and lists all kinds of potential 
threats. They're the things in this world that I kind of already listed a little, a little while ago, but Paul's way out of, ahead of me, and he's listed so many of these. These are realities that are bigger than we are, that make us feel real small and at times anxious. He talks about great spiritual forces in the heavenlies of light and dark. He talks about heights and depths. He talks about the great realities of human existence, life and death, and all that floods the pages of the stories that we experience in the life we live here on earth. Now, he doesn't mention these things to make us anxious. In fact, he lists these to to lift us up and to encourage us with this truth. No matter what comes at us, you name it, you list it. There is nothing, nothing that can ever cause God to stop loving and caring about us, and there is nothing, no, not anything, that has the power to pull us out of his loving grasp. God's power is too strong. His commitment to those who know him as Savior is too strong, and so there's nothing in the universe that can conquer these two things. His power, his love, it's ours to experience in Jesus These words are written to invite us into this reality. And Paul wants us to be lost in God's strong, secure love. Now, most often we talk about being lost as a bad thing. Zach in Walmart on Christmas Eve looking for said element that Christy would know is right here. That's that's the bad moment. I'm lost. Thankfully, I'm here. I arrived. We found it, right? Most of the time we talk about lost in that way. You know, sometimes being lost is a good thing. Maybe you are lost in the beauties of nature. This last summer, my family and I had the opportunity to go to Yellowstone National Park, and we camped there, and for five days we just got lost in the beauty and the grandeur of that, of that park, in the waterfalls and in the mountains and in the wildlife. That's a good lost. Sometimes we can be lost in a piece of, of art, at Christmas time. I know a lot of you are fans of Handel's Messiah. And can't you just get lost in the beauty of that work of art? And you can listen to it a million times and it lifts your heart up. And you could see another beautiful aspect to it every time you listen. Have you ever been to, maybe it's a, a national park or a museum, and you see a sign and it says, You are here because they want you to know where you are, they don't want you to be lost. I think these verses in Romans 8 are actually an invitation to be lost here in Romans 8, 38 and 39. Be lost in God's love, the security of it, the power of it, and the fact that nothing can ever, ever separate you from those things. It's the greatest security that we look for. But now I want to talk about Romans 8, verses 31 and 32. What then shall we say to these things? If God's for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? This is our Christmas connect here. You see, the security of God's love is the greatest gift that we can know, but it couldn't have been experienced by humans like us if God had not addressed the most disastrous of realities. And we're talking about the reality of sin and humans' rebellion against the God who created them. The Scripture, the Bible's clear that all humans, you, me, from the greatest to the least, have sinned, have turned our backs to God. We've rejected Him as the rightful King. We've chosen to be our own God. And the result is what we know to be separation from God. Both now and also into eternity when we die. What we see is what we need most. The security of thriving in God's love is something that's lost now to us because of the choices that we have made. And we have no remedy, no remedy for us in our own human strength. But God sent his son, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, to solve this great, this great dilemma, this great tragedy. Jesus lived the perfect life, submission, obedience to God, 
Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty for human rebellion, the price that we deserve, Jesus paid. And then three days later, he rose again, showing that sin and its results were conquered. That's what Romans 8, verses 31 and 32 that we just read celebrates. It speaks the story of Christmas with a light brighter than that star that led the Magi to worship, reminding us that while we didn't deserve this gift from God, he still gave his son. And he gave him knowing full well that Jesus must and would die. And I love how then the Apostle Paul just reasons simply flowing from this that this is a gift that will keep on giving forever because if God didn't withhold that which was the most dear to him, his one and only son, then why would he not also then, once we believe in him, pour out to us every last treasure of heaven, including the promise of living in and flourishing in and thriving in the secure love of God that nothing can conquer or separate us from. God's secure love is open. It's accessible to us through the coming of Jesus. And this is the answer for the deep need for the security, stability that we have in troubled times. The answer, as we said, is right in front of us because it's the message of Christmas. Now, it's a gift that could easily be lost on us. It could easily be lost on us. See, gifts are special things, but sometimes the value of gifts can be lost on a person. And when this happens, that's what we say. The meaning of that gift was lost on that person. It can happen for all kinds of different reasons. It might happen because we just don't understand the gift. Now, I'm assuming, because my family is very loving, that they have some gift plan for me tomorrow. I'm not sure as dad if I've been good to deserve it this year, but like I said, they're gracious people. Now, I've not hinted toward the direction of a sewing machine, but let's say that they decide to bless me with a sewing machine, and I mean a good one tomorrow. Well, guys, sadly, I hope I'm not really wading into something here that they were surprising me with, but hey, we're just choosing something, right? What if that was the gift? It would be lost on me because I don't know how to sew. I don't know the first thing about a sewing machine. It could be the most beautiful gift to me, but it's just in my own innocence, and I may be so grateful, but I wouldn't understand it, and so its depths of its meaning would be lost on me. I don't understand it. Other times, the meaning of a gift is lost on people because they just don't believe it. They, they, for one reason or another, they choose not to receive it. They don't, they don't accept what's being given to them. What if someone calls you these days and says, you've won a cruise? or you've won a car. Most often, these days, you're gonna say, uh, yeah, right, this is a scam. You're gonna hang up the phone, right? This is just clickbait. I'm not following after this kind of thing. But here's the reality. There are still groups, contests, that offer that real prize. And wouldn't that be a tragedy if the phone call was one of those real groups offering you that gift? The meaning would be lost on you because you didn't receive it still another way for a gift to be lost on a person is if they are entitled or over familiar you know most of us tomorrow morning are going to wake with power and and hot water and you know not necessarily being afraid for your physical safety it's easy to take those things for granted isn't it it's easy to take those things for granted and have lots of other things on our mind because we forget that, boy, there's a whole lot of people in the world that are going to wake up tomorrow and they're not guaranteed of any of those. There's lots of different reasons why the meaning of a gift can be lost on someone. And all of these can happen with the message of hope that Christmas brings. Its meaning can be lost, but it doesn't have to. And in fact, we must ensure that it doesn't. So maybe you're here this evening and you've heard of Jesus and you've heard the, the words, the cross, and Jesus has risen from the dead. And you just feel like, I just can't put all the, the pieces together. I don't understand it. Friend, don't let the message be lost on you. In 2023, I call, I invite you to seek that message out. Seek to understand it. 
There are people who would love to, to help you. Perhaps it's someone that you came with and invited you tonight here at the Springs Church. We would love, absolutely love, to walk you through any questions that you have so that the true message, the hope, is yours in Jesus. Maybe it's a message that you say, you know what, I don't believe this. I have doubts about this message. Once again, don't let the message, the meaning, be lost to you. There's so many reasons to believe the truth of the Bible. In fact, there's more reasons to believe than there are not to. Be open. Give this message of Jesus a fair shake. The pursuit of discovery. Again, lots of great resources out here. Once again, as a church here at the Springs, we'd love to help. Even if you were to come and say, you know what, I just don't believe, but I'm willing to give this message some time. This is an amazing gift offered to you. You have to receive it. And the alternative is trying to navigate this world on your own. It's always worth pausing to ask, how's that going? Is it going so well? Don't miss the meaning of Jesus tonight. You know, the characters that we celebrate at Christmas are great teachers for the way to give our attention to the meaning and not to let the gift be lost on us. Luke 2 tells us that after the angels sang the message of Christ, the shepherds, they ran. They ran to see about the message that they just heard. They probably didn't fully understand. They had every temptation to say, ah, it's a long way to Bethlehem. Ah, we were just hearing something. No, they pursued it. Christmas wasn't lost on them. Don't let it be lost on you either. You know, we mentioned that the greatest danger for missing the message and the meaning of a gift is just over-familiarity. Maybe even being entitled. I think that maybe that's the danger for us, most of us here tonight. Maybe we are just overly familiar with the message. We've heard it for so long. It's been around us so long and so the danger is that the meaning and the power the hope the worship could be lost on us but friends this gift is too great to ever let this happen tonight tomorrow I invite you to ask god to bring the light the hope the meaning of the gospel to you anew give it its proper place the time that it deserves in your life now and into this coming year. Mary, her response to Christmas is, is so telling. Again, recorded for us in Luke chapter 2. This is our path. She sees all these things. What does she do? She treasures them and she ponders them in her heart. On Christmas Eve 2022, the question for each heart in this room, young and old, no matter what station in life we find ourselves is this, will the gift and hope of Christmas be lost on us? Or will we step into and get lost in the beauty and the power of its message? This message that ultimately leads us to the hope, the stability that you and I need in this world that seems so unsettled. You know, in just a moment, we're gonna sing our closing song of silent night and we're going to be standing together and we're going to get to light candles just a, a short instruction our our uh, ushers are going to come and they're going to light the candle at the beginning of each row and then you can carefully pass that along the row to others around you you know this is a tradition that we often celebrate on a christmas eve but as you do this year i want to invite you as you consider the light in front of you, to ponder particularly your response to the message and hope of Christmas. Once again, this question. Will its message be lost on me? Or will I get lost in the beauty of its message? I pray tonight for God's work and power in each and every one of our lives so that ultimately we'll be lost in the security and the power of his love for us in this world, even as we are lost in the hope and in the message of God's Son, Jesus.